I'm looking forward to going to the North Campus because we didn't have church here last week. Amen. To see them, see them, folks. And again, uh, uh, Gerald, Pam, I know you guys got slammed out there by the San Jacinto. You know, we live on the water, then it comes at us like it has. We're seeing changes out at the ranch. The second flood really opened up some things for us. And uh, so but we'll talk more about that in just a minute. I know some of you were here last Sunday, so uh, well, I'm going to show you something in a second to get the rest of you caught up. But one of the things, we're entering the summer. Moving into this summer, I can tell you that it's important for us to get in sync with the season, this season that we're in, and in harmony with the Word. You know, what, what does the Word of God tell us? Uh, David's correct. I've been preaching on Nehemiah. I felt like that was a season for us to go into about rebuilding and doing things. But if, there, if you know, one doesn't discern the seasons, you may hear a verse like this. This scripture to me is, to me, one of the saddest verses in the Bible. In Jeremiah 8, 20, it says, The harvest is past. The summer has ended, and we are not saved. To me, it's important to realize, and I have a young missionary here, Josiah Ramirez is here. If you didn't see him Tuesday, would you give him a hand? Good to have Josiah with us. <laughs> Josiah's my, uh, parents work, and I talked with your mom yesterday, Claudia, uh, working in, in Torreon, Mexico, for the harvest. We here in Crosby, New Caney, uh, you know, uh, Montgomery, Harris, Liberty County, we're, we're reaching for people. That's a part of our harvest. But the issue is here is that the harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we are not safe. And in the, in the verse is written by one of the saddest of all prophets, Jeremiah, who that we understand never had a convert. He was a prophet to the nations, and sometimes we look for fruit. I'm, I'm a very, uh, you know, one of the things that I will not accept is an empty church. I believe in having a full house. Come on, give me an Amen. I just do. I, I don't believe in just having just a small group. I believe in reaching as many people as we can and not being ashamed of that or saying that. I, I believe in full houses. It's nothing like having a full house. It's nothing like having the stadiums packed because the team is winning. There's nothing like seeing the auditoriums full because the singer is reaching a new height in their music. There's nothing like having the church full because the preacher is finally hitting his stride. Can I get an amen? So there's something about that. But Jeremiah never had a, had a, had a convert. He was, he, he was known as the weeping prophet. I would understand why. He was always crying. He was always weeping about the things of the nature uh, uh, in, in uh, life there. But the harvest is past. The summer is ended. What did we get all the way through summer? And nobody gets converted. Nobody gets transformed. Nothing has changed in people's life. Then we have had a miserable summer. Listen, if you have lived, uh, you know, if you're in your 50s or 60s and you're still acting like you were in your 20s and 30s, then you've wasted the last 30 years. Amen. Life should be one of change. It should be something that's uh, evolving, if you would, and we're getting better at it. Time. We only have so much time. It wasn't it seemed like yesterday that I had uh, my son Josiah on the back of a, a borrowed motorcycle, and I was riding through Crosby, and I was thinking, this is a cool thing to do, just spending some time with my son. And then the other day, Colton got on the back of my white Harley Pearl, and we rode through the camp, and it just flashed back at me 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I was doing this with my son, and now I'm doing it with my grandson. Time has passed by. Time, my friend, is a stretch of duration in which things happen. It is irretrievable. You don't get it back. Amen. You get today, you get this season, and then it's gone. And so you got to get the best that you can out of it. You can never repeat it or, or relive it somewhere. And I love this definition. In infinity, God interrupted a place called eternity. God, lives, again, I listened to Colton. He said, the earth, God made the earth, and God lives on the moon. Now, he's trying to figure all this out. And I said, no, son, he lives beyond the moon. He lives in a place in the heavens. And I'm trying to explain it to him and help him understand it. But understand this, God lives outside of time. He doesn't even need time. He, he created time for us. He's Alpha Omega. He's beginning the end. He starts it and he stops it. But somewhere in this place of time, God interrupted a place called eternity. He just interrupted it, and he started this thing called earth, and he put us here. Amen. He created a space called time for a place called earth. The earth needs time. We have seasons that are rolling through. They always come back around, and he put a race here called mankind of all different colors, but God put us all here as together as brothers and sisters. Ecclesiastes 3, one says, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. You do not play hockey in Minnesota in the summer unless you are indoors. 
But when the ice is over the ponds, you can play. There's a season for things that you do. We, we love sports here, at least I do, and I have a right to. But I'm sorry, Sam. Uh, but, 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 but it's a seasonal thing. I've got 80-something days before my season really kicks off. I keep up with it. I know the seasons are moving through in that, na- in that nature. So, so here in our own church, we are not governed by fear but by faith. I believe in God for success this summer. Can I get an amen? I'm believing the summer going to move through. You Look, you can't have the beginning of the summer like we've had and say, all right, well, we just give up. I'm living by faith. I'm believing with all the hell, excuse me, with all, with all the stuff we've had. Okay, hang on. It's in the Bible. With all the hell we've had. Amen. I believe we're going to have a great summer. I believe it's going to be very productive in both churches and, and with the camp. Hope, my friend, is inspirational. I love when folk have hope, but hope ain't a strategy. Hope ain't going to get you off the roof. Amen. You better have a strategy for life to do things. God's kingdom must still be financed. God's people must move forward, not backward in the summertime. You, we got to seize the moment. The opportunity of a lifetime is only available in the lifetime of the opportunity. And I believe we have opportunity. But, you know, we, we had the opportunity to purchase the ranch with all the ameni- uh, amenities there. We did that. The, the new church here in Crosby, we did that. These have become great investments that we've seized. Now we got to recover from a flood. I'm sorry, from the floods, the 100-year floods. We've had two 100-year floods in six weeks. I am the one who didn't hear the voice of God. Had I only had a prophetic unction inside me that said, do not put that carpet in this week. But I did not hear God. I thought it would be quicker just to go ahead and get her done. Amen. But we stood by the creek bank, and we prayed against the water to rise, not to come up in the house. I told this Tuesday. And the water started coming up on the road. We prayed. I told Joseph, it will not get in the staff house. It come up four foot in the staff house. Then it hit me. God answered our prayer. He said, no. <laughs> Amen. How many know something down the answer? No. And you got to deal with it and go on with it. Well, during that time, last this was last Saturday. It's hard to believe this was seven days ago. Can you realize that when I saw the sun this morning, I was talking to my pastor on the phone. I said, I believe this is the first time in the last eight days I've seen the sun. Amen, and I knew it was coming back out. Uh, roll, roll that clip, if you would, Sister Renee, so folk can understand and see just a little bit, because this is what I found out. Hey, this is Pastor Jerry, That's guys. Me. We're at Camp Holy Wild here in New Canyon, Texas, May the 28th. Over here to my right, you see the staff house is already flooded. We just rejuvenated, uh, renovated that building. Over here is the clothing ministry. We did the same for it, took care of it. That's my old truck. We actually pulled it out last night. And uh, well, you can see where the trouble we're in. Back over here, you can see the kitchen. During the big flood, 100-year flood, it never got this high. That was six weeks ago. Here we are six weeks later. Our pool's underwater. Um, we got six inches right now from going over the levee, which is down by the church. If it does, we have a camp here. We're trying to get out uh, a group of wonderful blind folk. But we're praying to God that we can hold that back. Just letting you know that we're going to need some help in the next coming week to a couple weeks just to be able to take care of everything and get ready for our camp season. I believe it's going to be a great camp season with all the devastation we got. So hang in there. And remember, what we do here will matter there. That man is good looking. <laughs> so we got the blind camp out. We got them out last week. We had to bring them out on the tractor and bring them out the back way. So I got this letter this week with a $500 check. That's a start. Dear Pastor Jerry, greetings is the most precious name of the Lord Jesus. I cannot express enough how grateful I was uh, to you and yours in helping to work through the difficulties with the heavy rainfall during the latter part of Blind Camp Week. You and your staff were just terrific. You all went over and above what was expected. I trust you will not be overwhelmed with the aftermath of the storm. And as you know, they predict heavy rains coming up this week. Lord willing, and we'll pick up our trailer. And we just wanted to enclose a check. This came from uh, Pastor George of the Blind Camp sent this to us and then, and then on top of that this week we we're supposed to have a camp with 225 girls from lds latter-day saints and uh, i talked with uh and, and 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 i just i like these people their theology is different from mine I, a little skewed if i could tell the truth uh but yet this is what they said to me this week i talked with one of their main leaders I, I, we talked about moving this week camp up to uh, relocating it to august because we're still a little overwhelmed everybody say overwhelmed and he said pastor listen 
because of what you guys have done for us over the last few years, he said, I tell you what, I can give you as many as 20 people or as many as 300 people. When you say the word, not this week, not next week, or in the months to come, you say when you want help, and I'll send our church over to help you. These were Mormons. So, and, I, and here's my appreciation, I, and I appreciate them. But I said, you know, all we are is two churches. And as two churches, we've been able to take care of ourselves. And I hope we're able to keep doing that. But, and I hope I never have to call the Mormons in to help and take up our slack. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And we all step up and do the right thing. But they, they have denominations, so they got a lot of pull and things of that nature. But we're getting word from all over. Bishop Tony Miller was out of the state, out of the, out of the country. When he gets home, he said, I'm going to take up an offer and send it to you guys, help you out. So these are things that are happening. So we're seeing our relationship and our network starting to work for us. Amen. So that, that's a good thing. Everybody say good thing. But the word is overwhelmed, feeling overwhelmed. Have you found Psalm 27, and are you comfortable? I got 15 minutes to say something that should take an hour. Amen. Season, there's seasons of life that, that just feel like you're overwhelmed. You just feel like the, the things are just pushing over you. And I'm telling you, if, you, if you've been involved in the water and you saw it coming up, you know, and if you have friends and neighbors and things of that nature, or maybe it's a financial issue in your life, there are things that are over. Hey, having a baby and feeling alone sometimes can make you feel a little overwhelmed. Uh, grandkids, <laughs> life can just overwhelm you. Sickness, things of that nature. So here's David and how David faced with dealing with that. First, he focused on his faith and resisted fear. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He starts off that way. Whom shall I fear? He reminds himself that no matter how big his fear is, God is bigger than his fear. Amen. He's his light and his salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army beseech me, by my heart and uh, uh, beseech me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. So God, here's David. He begins to say, "Listen, I'm focused." Focusing first on my faith. Amen. I'm going to resist my fear. Second, he began to practice serving God in the good times. Everybody say good times. Good times. Amen. If you practice God when things with God when things are good, I, I've often said you got a right to go to him when things are bad. But God doesn't give me that uh, right to say that. God will tell you that even if you don't come to him in the good, he'll allow you to come to him when it's bad. As a matter of fact, it's often through the bad that we are led to him. He practiced serving God in the good times. He said, one thing I ask of the Lord. One thing. Not selfish. Not, not uh, 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 a harem. Not uh, uh, great chariots. Not a great palace. One thing. One thing I ask of the Lord. And that will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. That, that, the, and then he goes on to say, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. He's the same God today as he was then. Though we don't see him, he's, he's invisible. But yet there's this understanding that David knew if he got in the presence of God, he could see him. He said, for in the day of trouble, what? He will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies." Who surround me at this tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. He didn't say I will give offerings. He said I'll sacrifice. I'll do whatever it takes, amen, to honor the king. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your goodness in our life. Now, Lord God, during this season, we refuse to be overwhelmed, but we're going to turn to you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I, I like, I'm going to finish this up here where he says it in, in verse 6. He says, then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me at his, at his tabernacle. Will I sacrifice with shouts of joy? I will sing, watch it, and make music unto the Lord. Now, I'm not a music man. I, I tried to write songs when I was younger, but the rhyme was kind of corny. But when you get around somebody that's got an ability to do music and you read a scripture like that and you realize that David said, I, I'm going to sing. I got a voice. I would have loved to have heard the psalmist of Israel sing. David sing. And then he said, and I'll make music. So there was something unto him. This is what comes to me as I realize our, our, our world is so full of music. And, and I've said this because of The Voice and the American Idol and all these other shows. We are all made to sing. God put a song in every one of us. Amen. God put the music inside of us. It's, it's a godly thing that's been perverted on the flip side. 
Everything, everything good has a twist to go evil. So, but you see here that music is inside of you. Here's my prayer. That some of you that's got this ability, start writing songs. Amen. Start writing some things down. Start, start, and, and you say, well, that just sounds silly. No, no, give it a shot. And then give it to one of the psalmists in the house and see if they can put some new music together. Amen. Start working on That's where all songs come from. Who he said, well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Amen. That's what David says. Listen, when I got overwhelmed, I start singing. Who of you, when you get overwhelmed, you start singing? I do. I get in the shower and I just sing, sing. If I die before I wake, feed Jake. He's been a good dog. <laughs> Amen. I'll just come up with anything, but it makes me smile. It, it helps my day. I'm going to turn on the music, man. I'm going to play something that's going to be a little, that wasn't exactly uplifting, but still, it's something that's a little more uplifting. He gave God what he wanted. That's what David did when he got overwhelmed. He gave God what he wanted. Verse 7 says, hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says to you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Very seldom will your heart tell you the right thing to do. Let me say it again. Very seldom will your heart, I, I, and bless your ladies' hearts, because I, I, I speak mainly when, when, when I'm speaking of the emotions. Uh, most women are, are pulled by their emotions. Most men uh, are, are thinking a little more rational with their head. That's why we, we seem to miss each other at times. But you've got to beware of your heart because the Bible teaches our heart's evil. Our heart will lead us to bad places. But if your heart ever says, seek God, I'm telling you, you've got you a good heart. Amen. Because that's a good thing to do. The devil ain't never going to tell your heart to seek God. Amen. So when you get that seek God moment, you go after him. So David says, I'm going to tell you what. He, God wants worship. He's, I'm overwhelmed right now. Somebody, oh, I ain't got time for church. I ain't got time to worship. Yes, you do. You need to take a break. You need to worship. You need, yeah, sister, you need to throw some old shoes in the dryer and just kick them on and let them make some noise and get that laundry room and just stream out to God. Amen. You men need to get in the, in the garage and get your Dremel drill and just ring, ring, ring and give God some praise while you're in there. Amen. If it annoys other people, make a little noise around it. He determined to trust, to trust in God. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O oh God, my Savior. Though... Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. For false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. When David said, though my father and my mother forsake me, I dwelt on this yesterday. When you are alone, David wrote this. It wasn't read till later. There's a time when you're alone. You can't Facebook my mom and daddy have forsaken me. Feel sorry for me. You can't do that. David was by himself when he wrote this, I believe, in the cave. And in so doing, he's doing this to remind himself, though others may forsake me, God is still my fortress. He is still my strength. He's still my, you never left me, God. Amen. You stayed with me. So he determined to trust in God. Guys, if you don't trust God, you're in trouble. Amen. That's the only thing we can't trust in this world. When a world is messed up, doing what it's doing, you got to trust him. Then he determined to look for God in every situation. He, he, verse 11 says, I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I don't care what's going on around me. Even in the flood, I'll see God. Amen. In the fire, I'll find God. No matter what I'm going through right now, I'm going to find God in this. So he started looking for him in the land of the living. I think it's important to say at times, I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When I see my grandkids, I see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He determined to lean on God's strength. Wait for the Lord to be strong and take heart. When you read this, it's a waiting season. What's the hardest thing for you to do? It ain't going. It's waiting. It's sitting still. It's coming off a curve and realizing you're stuck in a traffic jam. Amen. It's that waiting and wondering. What's, it's, it's the waiting between the test of the doctor's office and the results. It's the waiting season. It's wondering what's going to happen next. It's feeling like it's out of control. So David in Psalm 27, I will tell you this again. Take that chapter. Begin to read it when you're waiting. Begin to see what he did. He focused on his faith and resisted fear. He practiced serving God in the good times. He gave God what he wanted. He determined to trust in God. He determined to look for God in every situation and to lean on God's strength. Well, what are you determined to do with your troubles when you're overwhelmed? You know, living life through seasons. Everybody say seasons. This is just a weird season we're going through. But it's a season. It's a season we're fixing to move through. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Then Noah built an ark. 
an altar. I'm sorry, this is after the ark. Ark's first, altar second. Let me say it again. Ark first, altar second. The ark was for safety to get them onto the water. The altar was to give God praise for getting them onto the water. Amen. He built an altar. The scripture says, taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood, and never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. Let me tell you what God said. God gave in. The reason God destroyed the earth was because of the evilness of the hearts of men and women. But after he destroyed the earth and had Noah left, he still said it. Your hearts are still evil. But I'm not going to destroy the earth like this again. I'm going to give you what is called grace and mercy to help you out. I almost, after reading this scripture this week, went and got a cow and a couple of doves and sacrificed them before God. <laughs> amen. Just to give it one more shot. Can I get an amen? Just to see if the clouds. I even, I even texted a, a, a Native American friend of mine. I said, if you're dancing, I'll pay you to quit. Amen. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful, increase in number, and fill the earth. Guys, what happened is during the flood, 40 days of raining. And then he was in the ark for a year. So there was one season during that year. There was no winter time that froze the water for Noah. There was no summertime. It was one season. But when it was over with, God started the seasons up again. And he said there will be seed time, there will be harvest. There's going to be night and there's going to be day. He began to separate things. And he said to Noah, he said, be fruitful, be fruitful. So God's seasons, seasons are God's plan and design. God did that. Provision is God's promise. Industrious people are God's command. Be fruitful and multiply. One of the things that made our nation great was industrious people. One of the things we're taking away from people is the ability to be industrious. We said, we'll give you about a, a tenth of your salary if you just stay home and do nothing. Amen. The bottom line, God wants us to be industrious. He wants us to be fruitful and multiply. Can I get an amen? amen. And God rules over the seasons, Daniel 2.21. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. So, I, you know, are you going to vote, Pastor? Yeah, I'm going to vote. But I'm going to tell you this. God's going to set up who he's going to set up. He's going to tear down who he's going to tear down. Amen. He's still going to be in control of all of these things. So God has provision coming for us. Discerning the seasons. Discerning just simply means that you understand the place that you're in in life. When I was 20, undiscerning, discerning that 30, 40, 50, you hit a certain place in life where you have to discern where you're at. That's why I told those young people yesterday at the funeral, take pictures while you're young. I wasn't picking on us when we get older. I still think we're beautiful when we're old. Er. Amen. But the bottom line is, you've got to discern your seasons in life. Amen. Amen. You've got to understand limitations as you move through life. Things begin to change. They, they begin to shift. You know, uh, do we know what season it is? There are two ways to know seasons. Let me tell you real quick. First is through, through wisdom. It comes from experience. You ever heard somebody say, I've been here before? I've seen this thing before. 30 years ago, I saw this. 20 years for us, many of us said six weeks ago we saw this. Amen. We've got a little more experience now than what we had. We've been here before. First Chronicles tells us, and of the children of Issachar, who were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. One of the things I, I, I pray for more wisdom is that God would help us to understand through experiences what we're going through. Now, we, we've done, done the staff house. We've done had to remodel it uh, twice now. So this time, we're not putting sheetrock back in it. We're putting tin. We're going to put tin all the way around the bottom and pray to God if it ever happens again, it won't go above the tin. And we just pull the tin off, dry the wood, put the tin back on. Inside the house be tin. Ain't nothing but men living in there anyway. Men cool with tin. Women cool with tin. Tin's cool. What's all that about, Pastor? So we ain't got to sheetrock it again. Amen. Amen. We're understanding. We're, we're through experience. Somebody say experience. experience. So what you go through. So what you've gone through didn't hurt you. Actually, what you've gone through has helped you learn a little something. So when you go through it again, you're able to help people. I have a hard time taking advice from folks that ain't never been through something. I really have a hard time from folks that been, ain't been through something or have been through something but didn't recover. And you're going to try to give me your experience? You ain't even got up out of it yet. You're still talking about it. You're still going through the hoop. Oh, wait, never mind. You know, 
Camp Holy Wild reminded them, you know, it, for, my, uh, for us, when we're going through the summer, it's going to be a grind. I say to all our camp workers, of all, it's a grind. It's the deadliest catch, my friend. It, it's going to hit. It's going to stay with it. You're going to wish to God this thing was going to be over. And the cool thing is, it will be. There's an ending to it. To our churches, amen, to look through the summer. I know some of you are going to vacate, go in and out, stuff like that. I, I thank God you're going to get to do that. But, man, when these doors are open and you can, this is priority to you. Amen. Well, Pastor, you can't tell me. Don't tell me what to do. I'm an American. <laughs> you know, pastors are scared. They're so scared to tell folk that they ought to come to church because they're afraid they're going to lose them. I tell you, this is where you ought to be every Sunday. Amen. Unless there's something pressing, emergency, something. Listen, you need to be in the house. When we get to heaven, God's going to look at me and say, why didn't you put a little demand on them people? Well, God, you know we're Americans. You know, and in America, you can't tell folk what to do. They're independent-minded. If you tell them not to be there, they'll leave. I promise you this. There's some of you in here. I will kick you if you don't start showing up in church. The men. The women. Uh, I'll let Sister Lori take care of that. <laughs> Can you love me in love? Can you do that? Can you hear me? Amen. I, it's important. One of the things is holding one another to task. When I first got born again, the thing with, with us is I had young men in my life that looked at me and said, well, you at Sunday. I missed you. So why did they say that to me? Because they knew if I wasn't in church on Sunday and I wasn't working on Sunday, I would have been out drinking, partying, doing something stupid. So they tried to hold me to task. You need to stay with the house of God. You need to stay with Jesus. They weren't trying to be mean to me. They were looking after my soul. Amen. We're almost afraid to say anything to people today. We don't want to hurt their feelings. We don't want to get in their business. I know God is nosy. When you get to heaven and you see God and he's got an Italian nose, you're going to realize something. <laughs> Amen. God is not. He stays in your business. Amen. He loves your business because you're his. He, lo he, he gave his son for you. Amen. I know I just crossed some of you and you're going to try me next week, ain't you? I wish a kick would work sometimes. I really do. I have friends that walked away from church and walked away from Jesus, stuck guns to their head. I wish the kick would have worked. I'd have tried it. America, you know, we're one step closer to the coming of Jesus. People say, Pastor, what are we going to do with the kids today? The kids are going bad. They, no, they're not. The kids are doing exactly what the Bible said they're going to do 2,000 years ago. Look at it. Mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Hold it there. Hold it there just a minute. I just said I'd kick you. That's wrong. But what if I did you like Nehemiah did and just pull your hair and cuss you? Huh? Huh? That wouldn't work, would it, Doug? Couldn't get hold of a handful. Uh, but that, that's, the, that's the bottom line. They, they were prophets. You know, they, they just came to me. They were prophets in the Old Testament. They got serious with people. They had to. Amen. This was important. But look at this again. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. I ain't even got to ask you for an amen. Next one. Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power, do yourself a favor. Have nothing to do with them. Yeah, I didn't describe the world. I just described the church. Amen. That's where we're at. We had to start saying, okay, I cannot allow stuff like that to control me. Amen. i got to get back to the book. Can I get an amen? Second way to, to understand the season, through divine revelation. Joseph had a dream. Seven years of production, seven years of drought, prepared Egypt. It was through observation. Through, I wish I had more divine revelation. I wish I could see things in people's lives. I wish I could give a warning ahead of time. That's my prayer. I don't have that, but there are people in our lives that have that. Maybe God, maybe you start praying, God, give me divine revelation about things that come in my life. Had I had divine revelation, I'd have never put carpet back in that building. 
Amen. Had I had an understanding of what's coming. Amen. Many of us, but it's through observation. It's through seeing it. The scripture goes on to say, we're in the world, but not of the world. Psalm 1, 1 says, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. So in so doing so, I'm able to observe what's going on. So we got to get in sync with the season, in harmony with the word. God may allow a season of struggle. Stay in sync with the word. Pastor, I'm going through struggle. Stay in the word, man. Stay in the word. And the fam- stay with the family of God. Stick with it here. Isaiah 43, 2 says that we, we're going. Sometimes we don't go around things. We got to go through it. When you pass through the waters. So you need to write this verse down. When you pass through the waters. Amen. Why? They won't overflow you. They're not going to come over you. I'll be with you when you pass them through them. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. And the flames will not set upon you. There are times you've got to stand in the water and quote the scripture. Amen. You've got to stand in the fire and quote the scripture. And believe God for good things. Can I get an amen? 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything, in every season, give God thanks. Necessity, my friend, is the mother of all invention. It's amazing what happens whenever trouble comes. People start inventing new ways to do things. And if, I was watching a show the other day about a group out of Appalachia. And the guy took a, a, a wood burner, put it on the back of his Toyota, and made it into a, 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 a made his engine run off of something burning in the back of his truck. I thought, how did he learn that? Necessity is the mother of invention. He figured out, I ain't paying for gas, but I got lots of wood. And he figured out how to put a smoker on the back of his truck and run the, I don't, I'm still trying to figure out how it works. That thing just smoking going down the road. It ain't got a lot of pull power, but it'll go. Amen. It, it's, it's learning how to do things when things are going bad. It's learning when, the, when this job shut down, how to start up this job, how to do things. Now. That's seasons, my friend. In times of summer, we ask God, what is he doing? What you going to be doing this year, God? Well, what, what is it you want? How, that reaffirm our devotion to him. And I was close with this. Amen. While the earth remains, the Bible says seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. And I asked And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. This is what I understand to be true. And I I believe it in my heart. When I was a young boy, I got out into the fields with my dad. And he gave me a tiller. And he pointed me toward a a little stob at the end of the line. He said, You keep this thing straight, son. You go that way. And I plowed that field. And I turned around and come back the other way. And I would keep doing that. And then when I finished, my dad would... Grab me a handful of seed. And he said, now go out there and start dropping that seed in them holes. I'm going to punch a hole. You drop the seed. And when we went through there, he punched holes in the ground. And I would drop seeds in the ground. And then he took that little package of seed and he stapled it on a piece of wood. And he stuck it down in the end. I couldn't tell from just looking down through there, but that was going to be a roll of peas. That there's going to have carrots. That there, we got four rolls of corn right here to feed the family. But I couldn't see what was underground. But I can tell you this. We in this church and I myself, we've been sowing seed. We've been throwing seed out. We've been providing for people. We've been helping people in hard times. And there's times in our life that we start having hard times. But I'm going to tell you this. I stamped onto a stick faces of people. And I know one day I'm going to see them come up out of that ground. I believe, God, that if we keep sowing seed in a time of need, seed time and harvest, when harvest comes, and this is our summer, and H, we sowed seeds. We've sowed seed into this community. We've helped folk. We love folk. We, we, we've forgiven the unforgivable for some, and we just keep sowing. And I'm believing, God, this summer that that crop is going to come up, and we're going to see it come up out of that ground. We're going to see people that we had not seen. You'll say, where did you come from? Well, years ago. So-and-so did this in my life, and I felt like this is the right time. You're going to see somebody else come in and say, I heard Pastor Jerry going to kick my butt, so I thought I'd come to church. Amen. I wouldn't do it. You know I wouldn't do it. I'd do jacks, but I wouldn't do the rest of y'all. <laughs> Amen. I love the Word of God. God has ordained that life comes in seasons. Some of you may be in an overwhelmed season. Some of you may be in a really good season. How many know that for some people... Uh, a drought and hurt or, or a flood for others is a, a blessing. I mean, if you're a carpet cleaner, you're blessed. If you're a carpenter, you're blessed. It's your season. Amen. If you're a roofer, people started noticing leaks over the last week. You're blessed. 
Amen. So what looks bad for one is a great season for another. Amen. Seasons come. God has promised provision for the lifespan of the earth. Let me say that again. God has promised provision for the lifespan of the earth. When those politicians tell you that we're destroying the earth, that we got, uh, what's that, global warming, your hairspray is messing up the ozone. When you hear this stuff, I want you to hear your pastor. For over 2,000 years, this earth has kept going. It's revolved around seasons. And as long as we keep planting, we're going to keep harvesting. As long as we keep doing the right, it's going to happen. We're not able to destroy this earth. Let me say it again. We're not able. Oh, Pastor, you don't know about our bombs. Go all about your bombs. They're not going to take out every person on this earth. I mean, all you need is one man, one woman to get it started up again. You know, we, we got this idea that somehow, so listen, don't listen to all the politician garbage. Don't listen to all that stuff. Just, listen, don't let fear motivate you. Drive your Hummer, Kelly. Drive your Hummer, girl. Amen. Go ahead. Put that fuel in them vehicles. Run it. Don't, don't be all upset. But if you want to run wood chips, help yourself. Do what you want to do. But don't let fear run your life. Amen. Don't. God has commanded that we utilize those seasons for our own provision. This season will be a season of harvest. I'm believing God this church will explode. I'm believing God our camps will be successful. I'm believing God that many of you, you know what? Some of you couldn't even hear me this morning for your own problems. You couldn't hear a word I said. Are oh, you thinking about what's going on in your little life? But let me say this to you. Your little life matters. What you got going on matters. Amen. And I think if you get your ship right, other people's ships will get right. Hallelujah. It's your summer. Plan your strategy. You work your plan. What Daddy used to say, plan your work, work your plan. But plan your work, son. You got to plan it out and then work it out. Stand with me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Hallelujah. Those watching through the Internet, we're going to pray with you also. You feel overwhelmed this morning. The Bible says when I pass through the waters, they won't overflow me. I'm going through them. When I hear people coming out of the floods, yeah, you might have lost your stuff, but you didn't lose yourself. Come on through it. We can rebuild. We can recover. And our prayer is that we do it better this time than we did it last time. If you felt overwhelmed, and please forgive me if I sounded any condescending at all. I felt overwhelmed this week. I had some time with tears welled up in my eyes, and I said, not again, God. Not again. And it wasn't just because of the flood. It was because of other things that happened. Not again. If you have felt that way this week, would you just lift your hand up? Hmm. Would you pray this with me as David did? One thing I desire, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of God all the days of my life and gaze upon his beauty. Lord, it's not about us. We ask that through the floods and the fires that we would learn through experience and observation. God, change us. Make us more like you. Use us for your glory. It's our desire not to hear that the summer has ended and we are not saved. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Would you give God glory and praise from here? I say it again, as long as we're throwing seed, we're going to have harvest. As long as we're sowing seed, sowing into people's lives, we're going to see harvest. It's when you hang on or eat the seed that you're in trouble. you got to let it go. Amen? I love this. Our lifetime is the soil in which our destiny is sown, cultivated and harvested. Our time on earth, if not used properly, will cost us our God-given destiny, and destiny is expensive. How we spend our time on earth is ultimately determines what will be recorded about us in eternity. What we do here is going to matter there. Amen.
God bless you. you. may be seated. I get our servant leaders to come up. Amen. I ask those uh, watching through the internet to also respond this morning with your tithe and offering. I talked with someone I've never talked to about this situation. I'll tell you who it was. It was Howie. Many of you know Howie. And Pat, he called me up. He said, Pastor, y'all doing all right over there? And I said, we, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do it again, Howie. We're going to do it again. Had, you know, do what we do. And I said, we just, I'll be honest, we didn't have service last Sunday. We're taking a hit financially. We have to redo this again. We're putting the camps off toward August. So we believe the money's coming, but it won't be till the end of summer. And uh, I said, as long as people respond properly, we'll be all right. He said, well, Pastor, let me tell you this. I didn't make it last Sunday to church because you didn't have it. But I kept my tithe from last Sunday, and I'll add it to this Sunday's tithe. Because one thing I've understood is my tithe is my tithe. Whether I'm in church or not in church, I need to give that. And, I, and I, this is what I told Howie. Will you tell that church out you under that? <laughs> Amen. I share with y'all this morning, but I'll tell you, I asked Howie to speak up. Because it means something a little it means so because it came from his heart. And I understand, and that's what I do. It, it, if a week goes by, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to give. Amen. So, uh, and, and I talk with some of you that have the ability to help out in other areas. Uh, if you can, step up and help us out. One way or another, I'm glad the Mormons said they'd help me. But I, don't, I, I pray to God I never have to call on them. I pray our churches can take care of our churches. Amen. Amen. If you need to tie their offering envelope, lift your hand. Our servant leaders will make their way to you. We're restocking Tayden's Pantry by the 19th, June the 12th. What's going on June 12th, Joseph? Oh, a swap. My bad. Game day. You're having a game day. Football? Dominoes and soccer? Ken, you'd be the only guy I could play soccer with. I just know that. Yeah. Grandpa. Hey, so that'll be next week. Next Sunday afternoon. Okay. Following the service. That'll be fun. Pizza, Domino's. Amen. Cards, 42, 54, whatever. Yes. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love you guys. I think you're doing great. Doing great. Don't forget Tuesday night, invite someone out, pray for one another. If you know if someone's in the hospital or if you guys, if we don't know, we can't go, you know. So you have to let us know out at the office. This summer, we'll be crazy. So, you, uh, you know, somebody got on to me the other day and said, you didn't come see me in the hospital. I said, didn't know you were there. And they said, I put it on Facebook. <laughs> Why does everybody think everybody looks at every post on Facebook? You know, I post my stuff for my mama to see it. In Alabama, you know, as long as I know Mama saw it, that's good for others to know what's going on. So uh, if you want to come out to the ranch this week, I put HUD. Some of y'all know HUD on a lawnmower. <laughs> Couldn't hardly get him off. Once he figured out how to work that thing, he run over everything. I was cutting garden hoses out from under the thing. I mean, he was just, he was finding stuff. Amen. But it worked out. As we give today, we're believing God for more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, royalties received, favor, pay off to church. Amen. Good to have Josiah here, isn't it? Let me, let me say this, guys. Josiah has been very faithful. Doing, he's 19 years old. When I see him pick a guitar and play, I see such a gift of a, a psalmist in his life. Loves God. Came in to help us out this summer. Now, I want to help provide for a lot through the camp, not I, we, his needs. But one of the things, Josiah, we're going to endeavor to do, it might be rough. I don't know what it's going to look like. But perhaps before the summer's over, 
we help you get a vehicle. How about that? Would that be good? Like a car, truck, or something? Yeah. yeah. A vehicle? We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe we can do that? Amen. And I, I know this. Uh, uh, the car has to be over 09 to him get, make it back into Mexico. We didn't know that last year because we got him a, an 03 for his, for his mom and dad to use. And it's in San Antonio with a timing chain on. But I, I thought, you know what? I don't want to do anything. It ain't about his mom and dad. It's about Josiah. And investing in his life and sowing into his life. So uh, this is something I want to do for him before the summer's over. Am I still on? Yeah. Okay. So just keep at him. I'm not asking anybody to give toward that. I'm just saying this is something we're believing for. I, in other words, bro, I got a huge carrot hanging out here. Amen. So you work hard all summer. You dig in. Amen. Amen. We'll see what happens. Amen. I love you, church. I know it got a little rough there for a little bit. I would pull your hair and kick you. I say it, and then I back off on it. Yeah, I might. Man, I just, if you, if you understood the, what this house does for us, and the gathering here, and how much it changes and affects when I was with those people yesterday, one girl just started, one young lady started coming to our church, and she was the connection for me to be with all those folk at that funeral. And after they listened, it's like, man, I, we got to go to that church. We got to go. And I'm thinking, we are such a well kept secret. Amen. When people say uh, to me, I understand the Bible the way it's taught here in this house, that blesses me. You know, a man sat with me yesterday. He said, I understand the Bible when you talk. And I say, it's because I'm not educated that you're able to understand. Because I don't know all the big words. But I, I have a passion for God. Amen. To see people's lives changed and transformed. Amen. To see, to, to see people like the Havards come in who hadn't been in church for 50 years and find this house. Amen. That, to, to, and I even said to him yesterday, you've got to learn to die well. We live well. We've got to learn to die well. Amen. When it's our time, not to fuss and fight about it. That we lived our lives to the fullest while we were here. Amen. And then we're ready for the next life. Amen. Well, I'm practicing for the next bunch. Get me out of here, Sam. <laughs>